As you can see, it comes in a nice green box with some, well it looks more like a highlight green with some kind of a face on the front of it. You know, it's 3-way SLI. 3 GPU, um, 16 speed slots. It supports up to 18, uh, 800 megahertz of RAM DDR2. It comes in a sort of a carton container. I don't like the way they package their products, but they've been doing this since all well, the seven series and early series of the motherboards. But uh, we got, like you, like I said, three GPU, 16-speed slots. The South Bridge, the North Bridge, cool, um, North Bridge cooler, and the South Bridge. I have no clue what this is here, but then we got you know the Intel socket 775, four dim uh, dim slots for DDR2 up to 800 megahertz with EPP ready, EPP and SLI ready memory. All our front panel connectors up here, like the power hard drive LED power switch, and then our restart, and then we got our auxiliary fans right here, two of them. We got uh, we've got our IDE. We got six SATA ports, SATA two, motherboard connection, 24 pin. R R fifties on my 790i. There are 47s, which I'll be doing reviewing very shortly. But uh, You can see it's a fairly nice looking board. This board runs fairly hot compared to uh, a 790i. This board runs about 45, 50 degrees idle. The MCP and then the processor was always fairly hot and it was water cooled, but it's all right for overclocking. It's not extremely, it's not the extreme board, but it did me all right. I um, I can get about. Two three hundred megahertz increase, but I can't get nearly as good as I'm doing on my 790i. But this 780i is a good board for people who are doing mild overclocking, and maybe for some people who are even doing extreme. But like I said, with all the updates, all the BIOS updates, software updates, I still couldn't get it to run completely stable. I didn't want to go into the volt into the red and the voltages because I was too scared. No, I would. Just knowing how it was with overclocking, so I don't recommend doing that, but for you who have done it, good for you. It does come with a fan, but that fan is, I think, is just for looks. It just doesn't do nothing. I don't even know if it's worth having it on there, but to keep your warranty, I guess you should. Um, I wouldn't run, recommend running it in passive mode, but as you know, it's an NVIDIA chipset. And some things that come with it. I use that for my uh, optical drive. It's got obviously the three-way connector, which I used for my 38800 DTX when I had them, and a two-way SLI, which I never really used, and you know some basic cables for SATA, you know some adapters, and again we got some ID. But packaging, the box is fairly nice and big compared to what XFX package is theirs. Very nice uh, box, but when it comes to the actual motherboard packaging, I have to say that's a bit ridiculous. But what can you do? Nice thing about EVGA though is they have some good warranty compared to other manufacturers, such as BFG or anything like that. But now that that does not really a factor anymore since XFX has uh, um, initiated their one year lifetime warranty. So there's no absolute reason to go to EVGA, in my opinion. But as you know, it's basically it's nothing different from the 680i. It's basically a 680i with an extra slot.
but oh well. This board was fairly cheap. It was I think two hundred and seventy-five dollars Canadian. Well, it's not fairly cheap, but it's it's medium or medium price compared to the seven ninety I paid um, three hundred and seventy for the seven ninety I. I will be comparing this to the ASUS P five K Premium and the seven ninety I from XFX seven ninety I Ultra in the next week or two. But for now, this is going to be my short little clip on my old 7 ATI 3-way SLI board from EVGA. Again, if you have any questions or if you'd like me to review something, uh, please subscribe on YouTube or send me a message.